This is the Doctor continuing the Gloomhaven campaign playthrough. In the last episode, we fought against a whole bunch of new enemies. Some night demons, fire demons, frost demons, uh, and we prevailed. It was a very profitable scenario, made tons of gold, uh, but I actually am running out of stuff to spend my money on. I have like all the items I want, except on Luke. He needs more money just to like complete his uh, class, uh, his, um, what's it called? The personal quests, I think. But for Chag and myself, we really, like there's really not much I could do. I could buy like a heater shield to absorb one damage on occasion. It seems kind of weak. There are better items to spend that money on and Chag. I mean, I could buy an iron helmet. That might actually be better than the necklace of teeth when it comes to tanking, but that's about it. It's only 10 crowns or 10 gold, but yeah, I don't really need anything else on these characters. So, uh, however, there is actually one more gold sink in the game and there's something called enchantments, which I believe this quest, the Frozen Hollow, uh, may unlock because we can get an Aster Enchanter from doing this. And uh, enchantments are another way to spend your gold. So I'm gonna hold on to my gold for a little bit more. Uh, there's one other thing you could do with gold. You could go to the temple and bless your uh, characters. So you get two bless cards, which will double the damage if you draw them. They get added to your modifier deck for the next scenario if you draw them. You double your damage but you have to discard it away so it's like a temporary buff it can be very powerful if you stack tons of uh, bless in your modifier deck through other means there are other characters who can like do that uh also when you donate you up your devotion and if you reach all the way to 100 here it will increase gloomhaven wealth or gloomhaven prosperity i should say which increases the wealth and gets you more items in the shop so like that's another way we can spend our gold you can only de donate 10 gold at a time so you know uh if you are swimming gold you might as well do it except for luke he's gonna hoard all his money for his shop uh however i don't think i need to do that just yet i want to see how much the enchantments cost they're supposed to be very reasonable now but actually don't know what the uh, cost is so uh, I'll save my gold and if we buy out our enchantments you still have gold left probably just gonna start investing into the temple let's check out the setting counter before we continue with the campaign while enjoying your customary post-adventure drink at the sleeping lion you notice something weird going on with the lamps in the bar your first thought is that it is your imagination. But after staring at lamps intently, you see they are flickering in and out. Tech lamps, as opposed to normal gas burning ones, have been known to be a bit unreliable. As if on cue, the lamps suddenly go out completely, leaving the room pitch black. Boy. I could offer to fix the lamps. It shouldn't be too hard with a bit of technical know-how. Or I could take the opportunity to steal some valuables from drunk patrons in the dark. I think we would be amazing at both of these. Luke, the tinkerer, it should be trivial for him to fix these lamps and me, well, I'm the best at stealing. So who should win? Hmm. Well, I am the leader, so it makes more sense to steal. However, I also don't really need the money. Uh, offering to fix the lamps. Maybe they'll pay us for that. Uh, but I really, I don't know. I could go either way with this. So I'm going to actually flip a coin and decide that way. All right, got myself a coin. Heads, I'm going to fix the lamps. Tails, I'm going to steal the valuables. I know you can't see this, uh, viewers, but rest assured I am flipping that coin. And it is head. So apparently, Luke is going to fix the lamps. You quickly identify the source of the problem. So I'm afraid wiring in the kitchen and have it replacing no time. The proprietor seems very impressed by your work and gives free drinks all around in your name. Hmm, it'd be better if he paid us, but you know what? I'll take that. Why not? 
Uh, okay, so, ooh, reputation. The stuff in the shop is slightly cheaper. Not that uh, I really care about that. So, all right, let's go do the frozen hollow. I don't really think I need to do anything else. An enchanter has been called for, so an enchanter must be found. Following reports of an ace there in the boiler district, you find yourself standing before an abandoned and decrepit tavern, the Crooked Bone. Opening the door, the inside looks exactly as the outside advertised. Spider webs, splintered stools, and dusty, broken glass. Stepping past the threshold, a translucent female suddenly appears before you. Why have you come to this place, mercenaries? Your presence is unwanted, and you're disrupting my research. You quickly explain why you have come, and the woman's frown deepens. Oh, look at the Aesther woman. She can fulfill all our wishes. All she has to do is wave her hands, and our wildest dreams will come true. She sighs in frustration, and actually does wave her hands. Leave me in peace. You don't move. She stares. Well, instead of disrupting, then maybe you could help. Scratch my back, maybe I'll scratch yours. That's how these things work, right? The woman turns and walks towards a destroyed set of stairs. But after a few steps, she fades away entirely. I need an orb from the frozen hollow in the Copperneck Mountains. The woman's voice comes from directly in front of you, as if she hadn't moved at all. Bring it back to me, and I may help you. A map drops at your feet. My name is Hale, by the way. Do not come back without the orb. Okay, we're off to find this orb. The MacGuffin, as it were. And a road encounter. There was a heavy rain last night, and the roads are now dark streaks of mud. And as bad as it is for you walking, you see that others up ahead on the road are having worse trouble. You come across, uh, you come across upon a collection of wagons stuck in the mud on the side of the road. You look around and see an odd assortment of people dressed in garish clothing. They are working to push their brightly painted wagons, all emblazoned with a marvelous and magical techno circus logo, out of the muck. We just stop for a quick meal, and now the wheels have sunk into this mess. The Cotro with a fancy top hat says as he approaches you. I'm sure our strong men will get us out eventually, but we certainly won't begrudge a little extra help. Huh. We can either help to push out the Quartro Ringmaster's wagon or the Fortune Teller's wagon. Hmm. I don't quite know the difference. I'm just rereading this. Doesn't really explain what the difference between the fortune teller's wagon and the Quattro Ringmaster's wagon is. I guess we help the Quattro because, like, Luke is here. You put down some boards and then heave and push until the great wagon is out of the ditch and moving back on the road. The diminutive Quattro tips his hat. Oh, I certainly could not have done that on my own. Your assistance is greatly appreciated. I'll tell you what, the next time we're back in Gloomhaven, why don't you stop by our circus and we'll let you in for free? Ah, maybe this ties into a future event. The map is easy to follow. Deep in the Copperneck Mountains, obscured by snowdrifts, you find the opening to a dark, narrow cave. The wolf tracks around the entrance are troubling, but with a firm resolve, you enter. Okay, let's see. Protector or layabout? <laughs> layabout again, gain seven or fewer experience points. Just like get a gazillion per points for that. Mm, I haven't decided that. Uh, Chag, I mean, I'm not going to take Die Hard. He's the tank, so his hit points could easily drop below half maximum. Uh, I don't know if I'll do Straggler and only take long rest, but that's at least like possible. Luke. Streamliner, five or more total cards in hands in this card or workhorse. Streamliner should be pretty easy for a um for the Tinker because he's got a massive uh hand size. Even if he burns a couple cards, it shouldn't really be a problem. But the question is, do I want to do layabout or protector? 
Um, just a little worried that like protector is basically a sure thing. And I'm actually like doing pretty well with my perks. This is basically like a guarantee and layabout. I, I don't like that. I would rather take the sure thing uh, because you do want to gain experience. Like gaining experience is really good. You want to level up. I don't like to do something that like is anti gaining experience. All right. Do I want to change anything? I don't think so. Smoke bond, growing knives, special mixture could be useful. Sinister opportunity is very useful. Um, there's a type of enemy called living spirits that have shield. Trickster's reversal could be interesting. But then again, Luke has the piercing bow. Uh, they they have very high armor, but very bad health. So the piercing bow is like a perfect counter. Um, Chag, do we want to change anything on you? I don't know if I need both warding strength and overwhelming assault. Drop overwhelming assault for grab and go. I do love the bottom of overwhelming assault. The push two, it's surprisingly useful. But I really want grab and go for this mission. Maybe I drop warding strength for overwhelming assault. It seems. It's just some enemies like the frost demon warding strength is really good against because if you push them their retaliate doesn't do anything to you but i think this is good i think this is good all right well i think luke and myself are going to do most of the work here chag is mostly just going to tank he's got the uh brute force the juggernaut and the shield bash uh, lots of tanking abilities. I think we'll be fine. Oh boy, this is a brutal start. Two of these living spirits, including an elite, they've got tons of armor. Still, a nice um, nice hit from the piercing bow on Luke should take care of them. These hounds, though, they are definitely a problem. Hmm. I could run up. I'm going to have to think about this. All right, for round one, this is a very, very dangerous position. Look at all these enemies, including all these uh, hounds. If they all rush us and do massive amounts of damage, we could be in some trouble. So uh, this being, I think this is actually a critical turn and I don't mind using some cooldowns. My plan is I'm gonna move up with Chag on 10 initiative provoking roar and just leaping cleave on the bottom. Um, I'd also do brute force on the bottom to defend, but I don't think I need that. This way we set up a skewer. It could come in handy, you never know. It's not like anything else really makes sense on the bottom. Uh, so moves up, disarms this hound. You can apparently disarm hounds, uh, so he can't attack. It'll take a little retaliate damage, whatever. And then I'm gonna move up special mixture to poison something. And then stab away with open wound, probably on this one, to uh, inflict the wound effect. And hopefully, actually, not kill it. Um, and then I'll go invisible. That way, I block this entire area. The hounds are stuck. They can't actually attack. Uh, and then, Luke is going to go very slow. Crankbow just to move. Toxic Bolt just to do a little damage. But next turn, he's going to do some sort of AoE to take out these two living spirits with the piercing bow. The living spirits will almost certainly get some attacks off. Not too much I could do about that. Uh, actually, because of that, maybe I should use Brute Force. Eh, better use Brute Force. All right. So let's see how that goes. 
Um, there is a chance the Hounds draw a card faster than 10 and they rush us, but uh, that is what it is. Okay. Oh, that sucks. All living spirits, but... Hmm... I don't think this changes my plans. I'm gonna have to eat a hit here. Um, these hounds have pure, so my shield doesn't do anything against them, but it should do something against these living spirits. All right, take a little damage. Not too much I could do about that. Don't think I need any of the cards back. Uh, run up. Poison, let's say this one. And then we're gonna stab this one. Uh, if I get a plus one, okay, that's fine. Just don't draw a plus two or better. Uh, in fact, a plus one would be perfect. Yes. And then we are going to go invisible to avoid the a gazillion hits coming my way. And then I could do Thieves' Knack plus something else next turn i don't think i need either one of these cards back okay so this hound's gonna die these two elites go first so they literally can't do anything and then the regular hound's gonna die that's like literally perfect you can poison one all right let's see what these living spirits are gonna do range three one two three they're gonna attack something. There's nothing I can do about that. Hmm, that's not true. This living spirit moved to range two. So you can move two, but you can't attack anything. This elite living spirit, there's no way I can prevent him from attacking. He could just move here and then hit um, Chag. Nothing I can do about that. It'd be ideal if he hit Chag. So this one's gonna come here, and then this one's gonna go one, two, three, here. Uh, just trying to think what I could do for next turn. If I move here, that's terrible because go here, this one goes here. And then attacks Luke. The elite living spirit will come two to the right. It might go like this and attack me. It doesn't really make sense. Seems better to let Chag take the hits. One, two, three. I should be able to AOE them from here. All right, let's just move up like this. And skip the rest of the movement. Use a toxic ball maybe on this one. Spread the poison around a little bit. Don't think I need either one of these cards back. Alright, beautiful. The regular hound died. Yep. Big hit here on Chag, but he can take it. Hmm, this is highly annoying. Living spirits split up. I could just AOE these hounds and the regular living spirit isn't that big of a problem. Let me think about this. Round two. I think there's a lot of different ways you could play this round, but uh, no matter what, I'm going to AOE and try to kill one of these living spirits. 
with Luke. And so the way I figure it, and I have the wing shoes, this is why wing shoes are so amazing on scoundrels. I could use throwing knives and sinister opportunity on myself. Sinister opportunity myself here right next to this living spirit. Move you over to set up a perfect AOE here for Luke. And just throwing knives, do a little damage to the two poisoned uh, hounds who uh, can retaliate. Then Luke is just going to pick restorative mist to go fast. And then uh, ink bomb to do damage, hopefully kill this bunch. Uh, and then Chag is going to use spare dagger, leaping cleave to set up for the skewer next turn. Also, nothing else really makes too much sense. Using a range attack on these hounds is good since they have retaliate. So let's see how this works. Ooh, this is some gigantic damage. But I don't think it actually changes my plans. Can't let these... These living spirits are far more dangerous than the hounds. Alright. Destroying knives. Good. I'll be able to kill at least one of the hounds. Okay, miss. That's really bad, but is what it is um don't think i need any cards back to be honest should be able to kill that this hound will come up and attack me but it won't get the bonus attack so that's good then let's ink bomb piercing bow like that and I don't even need to use the minor power potion. I don't actually think it would do anything here. My deck has only one minus one now. So unless I draw a minus one and a miss somehow, they all die and the odds of that are so low. I'm not going to worry about it. Watch as that happens, right? Nope. Beautiful work. All right. All those things dead. Now we just have a hound and another hound. Um, could actually move up and like take a hit. Yeah, this hound is going to come over here to attack me because I have the lowest initiative and I'm the closest. So neither hound is going to get its bonus. So let's move Luke up, get that gold. Heal a little. One health is one health. Don't think we need any cards back. Probably gonna stun shot next turn. Ooh, a miss thanks to the leather armor. Well done, Luke. And as for me, take the damage, but three damage is nothing. Uh, and then let's spare dagger. Poison one. Ugh, minus two. Quite unfortunate. But that is all right. Um, not gonna really be able to do the best skewer, but the question is, where do I stand? I guess I stand. Uh, Luke might go there. Let's go here. Wow, no, I think I have to come here. Luke can't kill this hound by himself. We're gonna need a little help. Do I need a card back? I don't think so. I use skewer next turn and probably um, shield bash. Round three, with most of the enemies dealt with, this should be a lot more straightforward. I'm going to use Flinking Strike Thieves Knack to finish up this hound. And then Chag is going to use Skewer to do some damage. Hopefully get this hound close to death. And then uh, try to finish it off here with uh, Luke and his enhancement field. Just picking some other cards like Net Shooter, just in case we need to mobilize. Shouldn't really be necessary. All right. Do I poison? 
could actually matter, and I'm almost certainly gonna long rest. Like, there's no reason not to poison. Alright, guess it didn't matter. Almost certainly gonna long rest soon. Alright, let's see if this kills it. Nope. Gonna take two retaliation damage. Um, just move away. Come here. And then, net shooter. Just in case we somehow miss, this car would have done something. We use the boots to just come here, pick up this gold. Nice. Don't really need any of the cards there either. Hmm, I want a long rest before the next room. I want to get all my cards back. This room was very, very clean. I could take a little time to get some loot back, long rest, and so forth. So let me do that. Very routine turn. Just going to do some looting, healing, and so forth. So I'm going to move with Duelist Advance over here. Get this loot. Skip attack. Skip move. I could get a card back, but uh, so that I get one more turn. It's generally good to use a stamina potion on an odd number of card turns, but that seems just like a waste. Much better to use a stamina potion to get back a critical card on a critical turn. I'm not in danger of exhausting uh, right now. So who needs a big heal? Probably Shag. And then a smaller heal for me. Then a nice big move. Skip attack. Okay, I'm gonna long rest. Um, long rest, one, two, three, four, five. trying to um, if if I long rest he, so Luke is definitely gonna stun shot and hook on to moving the position and long rest like that's easy uh, he's gonna long rest next turn I'm thinking I could sync all my long rest together and then go a little slower on myself. I think that makes sense. Just like, don't do anything. Yep. And then what do I burn? Not Duelist Advance. Throwing Knives, maybe? No, there are more enemies with um, Retaliate. I mean, it's gotta be a special mixture, right? This card is just, like, not super useful a lot of times. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. So, it's Long Rest here. I could just ditch flanking strike. I hate ditching flanking strike. That feels bad. Not sure I'm gonna use smoke bomb. I could smoke bomb duelist advance, but duelist advance is so useful. Smoke bomb duelist advance to get myself over here. Uh, that feels wrong. I don't want to ditch the Duelist Advance Thieves Knack combo. Could just use Backstab to move 5. 
probably the way to go. I'm not gonna burn smoke bomb, it seems silly. All right. What car do I not need on Shag? Got some good use out of a spare dagger. We moved a decent chunk of the distance. Maybe I can get rid of grab and go. Just looking at the rest of the map. It's a pretty big map though. Not keen to get rid of grab and go. Root for snow. That card's useful. Figure out it's useful. There are more enemies with retaliate. Guess it's gotta be grab and go. Uh, and then on Luke, what do we not need? Toxic bone? No, that's that's useful. That's a nice basic attack. Don't necessarily want to get rid of my healing just yet. Hook gun could always be useful. I don't want to get rid of that. Enhancement field guess it's pretty good though stamina booster no that could be useful i think it's i kind of want to get rid of something like reviving shock or flamethrower but ooh, i should have thought about that huh use those two cards instead but of the cards i have left it's probably enhancement field okay round seven Okay, start of round seven. This is going to be a fairly weak round. I just want to pop through the door and see what's going on and then do something better next turn. So on Shag, we're going to go Leaping Cleave, Spare Dagger, hit something. Even if we don't hit something, it's whatever. And then Luke is going to use the bottom of Flame Dagger just to move and then Toxic Bolt something. Again, if we don't hit anything, it's whatever. And then I'm going to go Super Slow, Sinister Opportunity, Duelist Advance for... Uh, or actually, I should do like this and drawing knives uh, we, i almost certainly will guarantee i hit something and next turn we can set up a better turn all right let's take a peek what do we got here living spirit but it's a normal one lots of these biggins including an elite hmm feels bad to not attack but we did plan for this eventuality i was hoping to go even slower i guess i could have picked cards that let me go even slower i was probably smarter hmm Okay, these frost demons are gonna come up. This one's gonna one, two, three. Wow. Did this do anything? No. If I come here, that'd be terrible. If I come here, I would still eat two hits. Two, three. Which seems very silly. Hmm. Kind of wish I used stun, huh? They also have piercing attack, so my armor doesn't even do anything. I just really hate, like, not doing attacks. But I'm not sure I have a better choice. I don't want to take like the five free damage when they're doing piercing stuff. That just seems bad. So I'm gonna hide. Um, let me calculate one, two, three. One, two. I think I actually have to hide here. That way I can move myself up. And then throwing dagger. Alright. 
Yeah, unfortunately I can't do anything with Luke. I suppose I could have gone here and flamed over it potentially. That would I could have hit these two. That'd be interesting, but I don't really see the need to do any of that. So let's just let them come up. And we will set up for next turn. This was part of the plan. Part of the plan was I could basically pass this turn. We'll do something more impressive next turn. All right. Well, I'm not going to be able to get a good skewer aim, but okay, let's see. If I come here, I can move this one over. I could move you up here. Ooh, and then I could do a good skewer. I have the boots. Good skewer would be pretty sick. Yes. That seems smart. These things also have retaliate three. Certainly annoying, but I hit the two in the back. Oh, drew one of my minus ones, really? That's okay, it's all okay. Don't need any of this yet. Thinking Thieves Knack open wound could do some good work. All right. Round eight. This is another very tricky round. Lots of enemies, and they all have retaliate uh, in melee. I'm not quite sure what I can actually do about that. Uh, the only character who's really ranged here is Luke, and can't have him just do all the damage. So my thoughts are I use Provoking War, Overwhelming Assault to move Chag up. He's going to Provoking Roar one of them to disarm. Not going to be, like, the greatest, but it'll at least prevent them from hitting him. Even if he takes some damage. And then we're going to set up for a big trample stun next turn is my thinking. And then we're going to do a stun shot. Harmless contraption to heal a little bit of the retaliate damage away. Then myself, I'm going to take a... Oh my god, an unbelievable amount of retaliate damage. But... Not sure I have a better option here. I could do this advanced thieves knack to try to kill that one instead. But then my next turn would be pretty weak. This way I could do some big attack with flanking strike duelist advanced to try to kill the elite next turn. Uh, and I can heal that damage away with um, Luke. In fact... Now shooter can theoretically control one of these. But I also don't want to move in too much to let the living spirit attack me. Yeah, I think this will be okay. All right, what are they going to do? Living spirit move 3, attack 2, range 3 targets all enemy in range. Well, that is not great. Oh, Frost Demon. They're going to consume ice. I have no way to prevent them from doing that. Good thing I'm going to crowd control two of them, but it's still really going to suck. Uh, do I push any of them away? The answer is no. That won't really do anything. I have to... Disarm this one. Miss. That is bad, but I did at least disarm them. You want a card back? Probably not. Two. Oh my god, this demon in the back is going to get to attack me? This is so bad. 
Wait, wait. The living spirit's gonna get to move. One, two. I don't know if it'll stand here to attack Jack or if it'll stand here to attack Jack. I really hope it stands here. That would block the frost demon. Uh, so we're gonna find out how that works. I don't think I need any cards back. Gotta stun the elite. No choice there. Another miss. Okay, it's just a one damage miss. Like, doesn't really matter, but still. Not a promising start. I might actually get stun shot back, except next turn I'm very likely to do a gigantic AoE stun. So I don't need it back yet. Alright, open wound with the poison. Oh my... Okay, that was bad. Cannot afford to miss that. I should have done the attack in a different order. Use the bottom of Thieves' Knack. I could have done one more damage. Because you can't draw uh, a miss and... Like, you can't draw two misses in a row. So to account for that, I could have attacked with the bottom of Thieves' Knack first. And then the top of Open Wound. So I missed one damage. One damage, man. That could matter. This could definitely matter. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you, game. Alright, Living Spirit didn't really do anything. The Frost Demon Elite is controlled. That particular Frost Demon can't attack because the Living Spirit blocked him. So we eat one gigantic attack here. But we can deal with that. Alright, that, that was not a good turn. But let's see if we can do anything to fix that. Round nine. This is gonna be another big turn. Critical turn after missing all of those attacks. Three misses in a row. That's okay though. I played Battle Brothers. I know about RNG. So I will use Shield Bash and Trample on Chag. Shield Bash just to go quick. We're really using the bottom of Trample. We're gonna uh, use the boots plus that to move through uh, and then stun all these enemies and I may or may not even use the top of shield bash for basic attack probably will we'll see I'm gonna take a gazillion points of damage but it is what it is and I'll be all right then uh, Chag will be all right as for me I'm gonna use the bottom of duelist or advance at the top of flanking strike and I'm gonna use my ring of skulls to drop a skeleton ally will then be able to give me the bonus for flanking strike and that should inf kill this elite and then gonna move up with restorative miss and crank bow just kill something else here burn crank bow it's okay uh restorative miss to heal a little bit uh and then next turn probably gonna do something like net shooter and uh, who knows like, i haven't figured it out but uh that seems like a good plan everybody moves in the correct order uh yeah we're definitely gonna need to stun all of this nonsense no choice there uh confirm and we're gonna use the warhammer wow look at all those plus ones and stuff all right uh let's use a minor healing potion to get myself some of my health back And do I even do a basic attack? I think yes. The sooner we kill them, the better. Take two damage, but it's okay. Minor stamina potion. Um, these frost demons are pretty slow. I don't think I need that stamina potion. All right, let's... Oh, the bottom of Duelist Advance won't actually do anything. Right, okay. Okay, so let's drop... This is a good time for Ring of Skulls. Flanking Strike, kill this thing. Love it. If you kill something, they can't retaliate. 
Um, Duelist Advance. We do need to move up. That seems smart. Stamina Potion won't do anything here. And then we're going to move... Hmm... Just crank bow this thing and kill it. That seems smart. Or I could restorative miss the heal. Then I should have moved over there with myself to pick up the gold. What am, I, what am I gonna do next turn? I think I was gonna do net shooter to mobilize one of them. And then maybe something like reviving shock just to do a little damage. You know what? Not gonna burn any cards. I don't think we need to. Plus the healing doesn't suck. Do I, so we're gonna net shooter, probably reviving shock. No need to get any cards back. All right, they are all stunned. But this is all fine. Got a short rest on myself. Burn smoke bomb, I mean, sure. Kinda sucks, I do miss the last invisibility, but it's okay. All right, let me figure it out. Round 10. I am going to go very fast with Flanking Strike to kill this uh, demon. Hopefully I don't draw the minus one or the miss again. And I think I'm just going to use the bottom throwing knives to move because I don't really want to get rid of any other cards. They all might be useful. I guess Sinister Opportunity I don't, probably don't need that. But you never know. And throwing knives, yeah, they've got like Retaliate, but... Most of them are close to dead, and if you kill them, then you don't take the retaliate damage. Then on Luke, we're gonna use Net Shooter, maybe CC one, and then Reviving Shock to clean some of these guys up. And then Skewer and Brute Force on Chag to also do a little cleanup. Oh, the Frost Demons are gonna immobilize, but they're not attacking, so you know what? I'll take that. Uh, skeleton the summon did its job to give me the surround bonuses but now it's not gonna do anything which is perfectly fine actually did do one damage which could be relevant all right the mobilize is gonna suck but uh i just realized I should have moved here so I could melee them next turn. Whoops. Mobilize. Targets all enemy wearing range 2. 18. Oh, that is annoying. That is actually super annoying. Attack 3, range 2. I can't get myself out of that. Huh. Well, this is rude. Stamina potion? Otherwise, I literally do nothing. I mean, I'm probably going to do nothing next turn anyway. But I could throwing knife something. You know what? This is a, I have an odd number of cards. Might as well use my stamina potion on that. You never know. Might actually use the throwing knives. This ability is actually real annoying. Okay, well. Luke literally can't attack. So, might as well... Power Potion? Hey, that could do something. 
don't actually think I like I'm gonna burn my power potion and my ego eye goggles here try to kill especially the living spirit you never know it could happen and I should have plenty of um, juice left for the last room I haven't burned a lot of cards so yes look at that RNG oh beautiful work the power potion look at that value right there all right can't do anything because i'm immobilized don't need a card back let's do a skewer because it's more likely to actually kill you know what let's brute force get movement get myself this armor because why not oh minus two uh, take a retaliate damage Do I get one of my cards back keep drawing to minus two gotta get rid of that thing from my deck uh, Sure well Don't really need it. I feel like I have a better use for it in the last room Okay, I literally can't do anything. So let's just pick some cards I won't use. I'm not gonna loot with throwing knives. That doesn't make sense. Uh, stamina booster hook gun. Long rest here. Alright. Can't move. Can't do anything on me. Uh, let's use the hook gun to try to kill. Well done, Luke. Now, do I want to get a burn card back on someone? Not sure I need to do that. Don't need a card back. We're going to long rest. Uh, what card do I get rid of? Leaping cleave at this point could be useful. Probably spare dagger. Okay, long rest here. Ooh, no hit points. I don't like that. I mean, I don't really need this gold. One, two, three, four, five, six. A little worried about my low health. That is actually a problem. Leaping cleave and hmm. It's not actually crazy to just open the door. I don't think because it's either wolves which i don't think there are anymore because it kind of makes sense that the wolves are spawn in the beginning room it's going to be more frost demons who are very slow it's going to be living spirits which we kind of want to lure them back i think i opened the door this turn Mmm, makes me nervous, but I actually think I, because otherwise I just, next turn I move up. I'm going to pass two turns worth of cards on Chag. I don't, really don't like that. All right. Let's come. I want to minimize my damage taken. So let's come. Next turn, I have a pretty crazy amount of movement. So why don't I come like back here? The backstab. Just kind of stay out of range. All right, let's do this with leaping cleave and we're gonna use juggernaut and we still have the boots oh there are more wolves 
Well, that's pretty terrifying. Maybe I made a huge mistake. No, I don't think so. Okay, let's run back. There's also a chest in the corner. I really want that chest. So I can't actually kill all the enemies until I looted that chest. Uh, don't think I need any cards back yet. All right, maybe this is gonna work out. None of them can attack and they're gonna rush me, which is really good. Oh boy, I could have sure used the uh, AOEs now. Okay, what card do I not need? I need hook gun. Probably don't. Well, I might actually use flamethrower. I might use reviving shock. I might use toxic ball. I guess it's the bottom of hook gun. We just have more powerful effects or the bottom of harmless contraption like the top of harmless contraption is pretty useless so i think that makes sense okay this is going to be a critical turn i gotta think about this round 13 another absolutely critical round there are sh seven enemies on the map shocking number of enemies including an elite frosty man four living spirits Kind of regretting burning some of my abilities in that first room now, but it is what it is. And there's a chest in the corner I want to loot. Uh, so I want to keep something alive. Maybe one of the living spirits. Uh, however, this is this is nasty. Uh, I've used up a good chunk of my abilities, but I'm not completely out of tricks yet. I'm going to move up Chag with the Shield Bash. Uh, I'm going to say Provoking Roar. Uh, shield Bash, move up. I would use brute force but i just worry that's too slow so shield bash move up skewer and then for i'm going to move up myself with duelist advance open wound um probably uh oh i think i messed up well i mean i have no choice these are my two cards um, I don't have... Uh, I should have stood here, huh? Oh, well. Or maybe where Chag was standing, I would have been actually fine. But you, ne you never know. Took a calculated risk. Okay, so hopefully I can kill one of the wolves. And then Luca's going to move up with Restorative Miss. Net Shooter. It doesn't make sense. The more I think about it... The less sense it makes. Hmm. Stun shot? So... I try to block... Shield Bash Skewer. Willis Advance. It's likely to kill this Hound in the front, which is good. Maybe I just do a ton of healing because I may not have any good moves this turn. Uh, harmless contraption could have actually potentially been useful here. What if I just did a ton of healing? Like restorative mist, reviving shock. This hound's gonna come up, attack. This frost demon. What if I... Stun shot from here on the frost demon. 
then I get attacked a gazillion times by all these living spirits. If I kill this one, this hound comes up and then this frosty man comes up and like I lose all my cards. Whereas if I move Luke up here to tank with like a crank bow on the bottom, then we can s he can tank a couple hits. Luke is the one who can tank damage. Then we can do something next time. I think it's actually got to be something like this. All right. Yeah, look at look at that frost demon elite. Ooh, living spirits. Very limited range. I think we'll actually be okay. All right. Confirm move. Skip movement. You never know. We could draw a critical hit. Oh, yes, called it. Now that was a professional maneuver. We got provoking roar. Anything else I want? Bottom of juggernaut and the top of. Uh, let me think. So I have to open wound. Like I have to, if I do this advance on the top. Like I have to open wound on the bottom. There's no way for me to open wound on the top. So I could stand here, although. This living spirit in the back can't actually target this here. So I'm actually quite safe from all the living spirits attacks. Do I want a card back? Leaping cleave is actually potentially useful next turn to jump in and then stun something. Actually not crazy. All right, the skeleton does nothing. All right, well, I know what I have to do here. We're gonna let um, Luke loot this gold. Could use the wing boots, but what would that accomplish? That would just let them attack me for a gazillion points of damage. That seems bad. Not gonna poison this. Oh, I can't poison it anyway, so it doesn't matter. All right, plus one. That works. Hound's gonna do some damage. Not too much we can do about that. Oh, now this is very, very interesting. The Frost Demon, if I come here and block, he can't actually attack. So I could stun something else perfectly safely. question is what do I stun I don't need to actually stun anything definitely not attacking the hound because then the frost demon moves up and smacks me for four might as well attack the frost demon for a little damage yeah two damage that's something do I need a card back no I'm gonna do an AoE next turn Oh, minus two on the hound. I love it. All right, none of the living spirits should be able to attack. Line of sight blocked. I love it. Okay. Round 14. I got a short rest on myself. Open wound. Sucks to burn that. It's one of my better damage cards, but it is what it is. Um, thieves knack on the bottom, throwing knives on the top. That seems to me to make sense. Do a little damage, you know. Nothing else really makes sense for me this turn. Might be able to use Sinister Opportunity a little bit. 
I'm going to do a restorative miss and net shooter. Net shooter for the AoE. Uh, should do a good chunk of damage, even if it doesn't kill. Plus, it'll immobilize this Frost Demon and CC it. And then I'm going to move up with Chag. Overwhelming Assault Brute Force. Just trying to go slow. Might even burn the Overwhelming Assault. We'll see. Hound is moving quick to Mudo. Living Spirits are going to do a lot of damage. Definitely a problem. Okay. Um, Skeleton is going to move towards me, the summoner. These living spirits are all going to do their attacks. If I stand here, they are all going to spam me with their attacks, which would like exhaust me. So what I'm actually going to do is step back with Thieves Knack and then throwing knives on the wolf and the frost demon. Not that my throwing knives can't really do anything to the, uh, the living spirits anyway. And this way, I at least do not take unnecessary damage. All right. Didn't crit there, the muddled. Muddle is the opposite of um, the ego I goggles. You draw two modifiers and you choose the worst one. Not a problem when, as long as you don't draw the miss on a one hit point enemy. Killed it, no problem. Uh, well. Kind of regret burning that power potion actually no i don't that was still good uh let's use the ego eye goggles just root these and then we can run back and at least two of the enemies won't be able to attack right one two three yeah so that's we still mitigate a good chunk of damage question is do i want to target these through Oh, wait, what am I doing? Uh, well, okay, whatever. Targeting three in the middle seems fine. Confirm. Yes. Wait, what? What happened? Okay, I don't know what happened there, but... From targets. Ooh, crit one and killed it. I love it. Even well muddled, Ego Eye Goggles, pretty good. Then we're gonna step back, do a little basic heal. We're gonna now eat two attacks from the Living Spirits. But that is what it is. I guess it's actually gonna still be on me, but what can you do? Let's get the stun shot back. I might need that. Might have to burn a car here just to live, but is what it is okay minus one just gonna receive two damage oh oh iron helmet i love it iron helmet getting value for sure i mean i'm not a fan of burning cards except this is the end i just want to thin out the enemies you know i have plenty more cards in my deck let's let's burn let's burn the overwhelming assault when else are we going to use it just don't miss we should be good well done shag and you even get to heal yourself a little bit And you gain two experience from that. That was very good. Okay. Oh, man. There's a perfect AoE opportunity here. Although, I don't actually want to do it because I wanted to get the chest. Round 15. This is a long scenario. All right. This is uh, the time for Chag to shine with the Leaping Cleave. He's going to come back here and then... Uh, provoking roar to disarm one of this one in the back probably then i'm gonna move up with myself duelist advance to stand here in the doorway and flanking strike to hopefully kill the other one and then luke is going to stun shot and just use flame door to move up stun and control the biggin 
and we'll deal with the bigot next turn and try to get into position to loot that chest. Okay, they do a little curse, but I'm not real worried about that. Uh, I don't think I changed my plan. Might as well like this arm. Don't know if it actually stops them from cursing. I guess we're gonna find out. No reason not to disarm. Then I'm gonna use the bottom of Duelist Advance just to move. Kind of unusual, but... Ooh! Drew my minus one. What are the odds, huh? Very bad RNG this run, but it is what it is. Um, this is a perfect flamethrower, but I didn't want to do that because I want to keep something alive so I can loot the chest. Alright. Then stun the big one. Miss. Doesn't matter. Alright, they're going to put some curses in my deck, but... I guess they can still curse. Even, uh... Alright, the disarm didn't do anything there, but... They also didn't attack. So, it's fine. Those curses in our deck... Not great, but we can, I can work with that. Uh, long rest here, and then... No stuns left. I have to run up and, like... Tank. don't actually mind burning the bottom of reviving shock let's do it like this uh, sure skeleton move up buddy so let's do a sinister opportunity to kill this one. Oh my god okay i am now actually slightly concerned I'm gonna tuck myself back here. Might actually need a long rest. This way, hopefully, the demon will come and smack my skeleton, which is pretty irrelevant. Huh. What are. Th huh. I really was expecting to kill them. I mean, I could just kill the Frost Demon. That might honestly be the best course of action here. Let's uh, make sure we draw our... Yeah, let's just attack. You never know, we could get lucky. I'm gonna attack with the Reviving Shock first. Okay, now just don't draw a miss. Or curse. All right. Well done, Luke. Well done. Also got two experience from that. All right. Two living spirits, but not a problem. Chag can take it. Oh, I guess they're going to attack Chag. Why? They should attack the mercenary with the lowest initiative. Wait, how much health do I have left? Attack to re receive four damage. Wait, I'm a little confused. Um, first, this seems like a bug. The way the game is supposed to work is enemies are supposed to attack the mercenary with the lowest initiative, who that is closest, which is clearly Luke. Like, clearly Luke. This isn't even like a mystery, right? Like here, here, they're both one hex away. So I, I don't understand why it attacked Chag. Also, the game is bugged. Like how much, I can't actually tell what my current hit points are. I have three hit points. Okay. So if I don't burn two discarded cards, I just die. Right, um, attack brute. Living spirit. Really wish I could tell. 
Choose to take damage, burn one available card, or burn two discarded cards. Every see the the interface is claiming I can take the damage and not die, but I'm pretty sure that's a lie. I'm pretty sure I have three health left. If I um reload the interface, does it do anything? No. Okay, I have no choice. You really, really don't want to burn two discarded cards, but I have literally no choice here. I actually use Juggernaut. I'm gonna burn your Shield Bash and Brute Force. Wait, what? Now I have seven hit points? This is very... Confusing. Using. I feel like there was a bug in there somewhere. I don't even know what the bug is. Get rid of Juggernaut, I'm thinking. Okay, I don't really know what the bug was, but okay, whatever, whatever. I'm going to long rest to get my boots back so I can go loot that treasure chest. And then a. Just gonna make sure I don't actually kill. So let's move. Range three targets all enemy in range. Whatever. It's fine. Oh, I should have skewered the other one. Hey, look out. Got lucky. Got lucky. That bug really drew me. There was... First of all, there was a bug with the, like, enemy not attacking the right target. Oh. I'm gonna have to burn a card. Burn two discarded cards. Ew. Very sloppy. Very sloppy on this mission. Probably should have done some more healing. Uh, throwing knives could help me loot. Backstab could help me loot. Definitely very, very sloppy. Um, get myself into position. I'm gonna get ready for some looting. Don't think I need that. Okay. Got a long rest here on Chag. Long rest here. Gotta make sure no one gets um, exhausted. All right. That won't work. Ooh. Guess I messed up. Okay, you know what? I'm not gonna worry about the gold on the floor. We have so much gold. Uh, let's do this. Poison, kill. Critical hit, I love it. I should've could've short rested and gotten the loot and then wing shoes to come here and get the treasure chest. I don't know why I didn't see that, but it's okay. Missing a little gold isn't the end of the world. Especially when I just loot 20 go like that. Bit of a sloppy mission, but this was a hard one. This is one of the harder missions in the game, and at least in the early game. Lots of enemies, long room. Your adversary's dead. You approach the back of the chamber, where a small blue sphere floats above the floor. You slowly reach out your hand and find the orb cold to the touch. With a firm grip on it, the temperature is almost unbearable, but you quickly stash it into your pack and make your way back to the crooked bone. Okay. Let's see. I did 55 damage. That sounds about right. Uh, took 20 damage on myself and 26 damage on Chag. Somehow Luke took zero damage this entire run. Uh, looted a decent amount of gold piles. There were quite a few on the floor, but 
it's not really a big deal. Got a lot of experience. Yeah, this looks good. Tough mission, very tough. Almost exhausted, but so, uh, that was a good chunk of that was misplays, just like resting and letting the enemies attack. So I had to burn discarded cards. So that was just like sloppy play. And that one bug that really drew me. You enter the abandoned tavern and call out to hail. With no response, you wander around, observing the chaotic mess around you. You wonder how she gets any work done in this environment. As you approach the counter, Hale appears before you, holding the orb. Very interesting. She doesn't seem to notice you at all. A rift in our plane, somehow contained within a spherical barrier. Good thing you didn't break this on your way back. You easily could have been sucked into a realm of pure frost and been frozen solid before you had time to breathe. Or something worse could have happened. It's just so confounding. Who would have the power to do this? Hale takes a step to the left and disappears again. You wait for what feels like hours, refusing to sit on the few stools that haven't yet fallen apart. You call out occasionally, but receive no response. Oh, you're still here. You turn around to see Hale in the middle of the room. Good. I'd like to experiment on you if it's all right. She reaches out to you and you stumble backward, falling over a table that splinters into hundreds of pieces. Oh, don't be a baby about it. I'm pretty sure it will end well. Hale explains that she wants to try to bring forth raw power from another plane and contain it in a small orb that could give enhanced powers to anyone possessing it. The containment process, however, requires a lot of gold metal. Now that you have helped me in my endeavors, I suppose I should return the favor, Hale sighs. So what was it exactly that you wanted? Okay, we unlocked the Enchantress. That is the last part of the um world map that's the last uh, uh mechanic in the game and what enhancements let you do i guess it uh is well this explains it the screens allow you to add enhancements to all your abilities select the ability then the enhancement slot and then the enhancement you wish to add to that slot be aware that different enhancements cause a different base amount and the cost is modified by the number of enhancements already on the card and the type of ability it is when you remove the enhancement, you cover 75% of its original costs. So, for example, um, I could enhance my flanking strike with plus one damage for 35 gold. This is why, like, I want to save money because these enhancements can be pretty expensive. Some of the effects are super strong, as you can see. Like, enhancing this arm would allow me to, like, negate an enemy attack. Pretty good stuff. Uh, lots of options. Wound is usually very, very good. Uh, I could make Flanking Strike into basically an open wound by putting a wound card on it. And now the thing is, I only have one enhancement point. Um, and I can earn enhancement points as Gloomhaven Wealth increases. So I can only right now enhance one card, which is certainly a lot less impressive. There are also two different abilities. I could enhance like a move or infusing an element. Though I don't really use elements, so that's kind of like meh. I can enhance the range. Uh, poison, wound are often very good. Um, AoEs are really, really good enhancements. Like if I enhance, uh, let's say, not flame door. You could, well, I could increase the area. Uh, on some of these AOEs, that could be sick. Like Ink Bomb. Where's Ink Bomb? I guess I can't increase it on Ink Bomb. I could increase it with Wound. That'd be pretty crazy. Um, I could upgrade Jump on some of these cards for um, Chag. Move to Disarm. Ah, too expensive. Well, I'm gonna look through these and figure out what to enhance on my characters 
uh, in the next episode. And I'm probably going to go, uh, like, help Jaxera take over the town now. I was just mostly looking to unlock the Enchantress before I did anything else. All right. Thank you for watching. Until next time.